What's happening guys, Jim the Game Guru. Let's dig into 19 open world games on the Nintendo Switch. My favorite category. I absolutely love, 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 love this category. Most of the games on this list I have played and enjoyed. And most of these games are awesome games that you cannot go wrong with. I am your video game and board game nerd. I do have some giveaways coming up very soon. I have a giveaway for Wingspan, the board game, coming in probably toward toward the end of this month. Uh, and then I have Hades, that's going the roguelike Switch game that I'm going to be giving away on a giveaway that is going to be in probably about early second week of April. Okay, let's dig in. So the first game on the list is, the number on this list is no particular order. They are just games that I have decided to put in the slots. Let's start off with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Wow, what an amazing game. This game is probably one of the best Zelda games ever. And there's quite a few. I mean, I, th I think Zelda has been one of those series that has been very successful. There's a lot, a lot of great Zelda games. I can't really think of any that were just that were terrible at all. Breath of the Wild is not does not disappoint. A complete open world, beautiful rendering in the game, and you can just run around everywhere and climb up things and multiple enemies everywhere. There, the world does have a lot of shrines that will have challenges that you can enter into the shrines to. Um, complete. There's also like these hidden things throughout the world that you can find. Uh, the towns are beautiful. Uh, I love how they've done, you know, all, even all the townsfolk in the in the town. And, and you're basically well, you're Link in this world, and you're fighting against the calamity. And and I and I know that's Nintendo's favorite word lately is calamity, calamity this, calamity that. Every time I see a game now, I absolutely love Legend of Zelda. Uh, Breath of the Wild, and it's cool because you can actually ride horses too. You can find horses, ride them, but yeah, this is an amazing, amazing game. It's, it's. I feel like this game is a must buy by far. Okay, so the second one on the list, let's go with one that has been around forever. Skyrim, yeah, Skyrim. I, I absolutely love Skyrim. Um, well, you're basically a human that ends up getting powers from dragons as you defeat them. And at the very end of this game, you have to defeat like an all-powerful dragon. The thing I like about the Elder Scrolls games is that you just kind of go anywhere and do anything. Even though there is like a main objective, a main quest, there are so many side quests in Elder Scrolls games that you can just go anywhere, fight anybody. You could actually kill NPCs, and a lot of games don't do that. They don't allow you to kill NPCs. You can... Deal stuff, you can pick locks, you can, I mean, the, the whole variety of classes that you can be. It's, it's, it's just awesome. It, it is like the epitome of exploring when you're in, in, in an Elder Scrolls game. Because you just don't know what's where and you just kind of go out and you explore the land. Um, but yeah, Skyrim is awesome. It's been around forever. It's been around, it's, it's like, I feel like it's on, on so many different consoles and the PC. Bethesda just keeps releasing it, and I love what they said about the game. They're like, well, uh, people are like, why are you still releasing Skyrim? It's because you guys are still buying it. You're still buying it. And, hey, I think they should. They should continue to release it. This game is... It is expensive for an older game. It's $60, but it does go on sale quite a few times during the year, especially like around major holidays and stuff. I've seen it kind of dip to half sale. They do like this periodic half-off sale uh, on the game, and usually I find that mostly on the eShop and not really on the physical copies in stores. Alright, the third game is Dragon's Dogma. This game, another amazing title. Another amazing title. It doesn't have, like, the graphics of a lot of the other games, but in this game, basically, your protagonist, you have your heart stolen from a dragon, rips it right out of your chest. You're still alive. Uh, I guess maybe because the, the, the dragon's giving you the power to stay alive. You're, you are called the Arism, and you basically venture through this, this world to try to find the dragon and then eventually beat them. The combat is amazing. I love the combat in this game. And it's got combat that I wish a lot of other games would have. Like even though Zelda's like Breath of the Wild's combat was really good, I feel like Dragon's Dogma has one of the best combat over many of these titles, even over Breath of the Wild. 
uh, you can actually shoot like a bow and arrow, and then you can actually then use your your main melee weapon. Whether you're, you're somebody has a sword, or or even if you're a sort like a, a wizard, a sorcerer, or whatever, then you can use spells. And another one of those games where you go out and you explore. It is even though it's open world, it's a little bit more limited than the other games. I feel like there's there's places where the game kind of funnels you into a, a particular area that you have to walk through instead of being able to just climb up a mountain and go up and over. That's the one thing I don't like about its open world traits because you always have to u end up using some kind of a road or like flat grass or even like hills that are easily accessible. Like you, there's no way to climb mountains and go over things. I mean, I guess that's how they, they kind of keep you in. It's an amazing game and it's, it's one that so many people have loved but yet capcom is just like no nah, we're not gonna create a sequel so I'm, I'm hoping that one day they'll make a sequel i mean it's caught on pretty well they, they, even netflix has a series a uh, anime series on it so maybe there's enough attention now that maybe capcom eventually will do something all uh, right the fourth game on the list saints row th the third and saints row four man these, these games are great. They're showing like Saints Row the Saints Row the Third is showing its age now a little bit. Um, it's only because it's just been you know, it's it's old now. It's so the graphics graphically it's not as good as Saints Row Four and it's not as good as some of the other games now. But the gameplay in the game is is amazing. Like like you're in like this large city and there's so many missions and it's like you have all these like these gangs. And on the on the that's for the third. The fourth one is with like an alien invasion, and then you kind of go into like this virtual environment. Uh, so I I love Saints Row the third. I did not like the fourth as much, and the main reason why I don't like the fourth as much is because it's just a little it's a little over the top. It just and that's the nice thing about Saints Row. It's all about the just the. Re ridiculousness with like just running around and causing mayhem and doing stupid crap there are times in the in the third when something um, like super ridiculous happens like beyond the normal ridiculousness that you're just like whoa like that was that was awesome but with saints row the fourth the ridiculousness is so much that when it when it's constant and it's all the time it starts to you start to get used to it and you start to get kind of numb to it it didn't feel as good as the third but i think most people actually think fourth is the fourth is better but for me personally i think saints row the third is better and those those games do go on sale every now and then they'll like they'll have like a half off um but i think saints row the third probably goes for like 39 or dollars i believe somewhere around that okay the fifth game on the wish list witcher 3 holy cow what an amazing game. One game that I played on the PlayStation 4 and put a ton of hours into. And it's another game that I played on the Switch and put a ton of hours into. And it's awesome on the Switch. It is awesome. I love the update that they pushed out for this game. That they actually allowed you to tur turn off the anti-aliasing. I like it with the, the sharper look. But it runs well. And in this game, you're Geralt of, of, of Rivia and you're a witcher. You're hunting down beasts through like these contracts that you have to fill. Like, and in this game, you are trying to track down Ciri. Ciri is a, a woman that trained under you for like her almost her entire life and she's being hunted down by this large group of people that have like these hounds and they have like the special frost ability and the, the leader of that group for some reason makes me think of sauron in the lord of the rings i don't know why he just does he goes through and he devastates these villages with this frost and he just they just slaughter people but yeah it is a fantastic game and Geralt actually has abilities as well so he has like abilities where he can push out air blasts and knock through rocks and and then he's got another ability where he can use shoot out fire. Then he's got another ability where you can he can shield himself with um, so that way if, if you take hit from an enemy uh, get hit by an enemy you can actually defend yourself a little bit better. And there's a there's a skill tree in here where you can actually power up Geralt through your through your entire adventure. So many quests long the dialogues in this game are amazing there's actually enemies in this game that make me hate them so much like the witches there's actually these three witches in one part of the game and i hate them with a passion 
and they've done such a great job of the characters in this and just everything the dialogues the combat high 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 recommend and it, i mean you get a ton of content for the price definitely definitely play the witcher 3 okay let's see what's next um ooh, the sixth on the list immortals phoenix rising my god another great game this game takes like it's, it's like a blend of a different things from different games and they put it into this one kind of in one game and it feels very unique to me the the world is i would feel like it's more breath of the wild style the world but even though the look doesn't look the same as breath of the wild it has a very different artistic approach a lot of humor in this game there's a lot of humor you have all the gods it's all about greek mythologies you're immortal then you have to go and revive all these gods in this land and defeat big enemies in order to defeat the titan in this game so there's one titan that's causing all of this chaos uh, but yeah the, the game has got great writing in it it's humorous the combat is is awesome and there's a lot of things that you're you're at your character can actually do from swimming to gliding to climbing and it, it's it's just a absolute fantastic game so i High recommend on that. The only thing I don't like about the game is Ubisoft because Ubisoft loves their microtransactions. They push a lot of their cosmetic stuff into their stupid digital e-store within the game, which drives me freaking insane. And the other thing I don't like is that if you have an online connection with the game, they will actually force you to create an account. I hate that. Absolutely hate that. But other than that, the game is really awesome. Okay, number seven. Uh, Green Hell. This is one that I have never, ever played. And the only reason why it even got on my radar is because one day I saw it on one of the cheap eShop sales. I didn't pick it up. And I was kind of unsure. It was, it was, it was really, really cheap. And I, should, I probably should have bought it. But um, but this is a very it's, it's a survival game where you're in a jungle um, without any food or water trying to survive find your way out and you're apparently you're clinging to life and you have to set up this journey where you're defending yourself against animals in the jungle against sickness in the jungle and against any kind of tribal people you find in the jungle so it's very very survival based I'm not sure what the plot is I don't know if there's anything deep within it besides surviving and defending and then eventually getting somewhere um but it looks interesting so that is green helm uh number eight this is another game that has eluded me for the longest time still haven't picked it up i don't know why but sometimes there's series that i just don't really gravitate toward and assassin's creed is one of them so dark souls was the other one i finally ended up playing dark souls the first game for the first time on the switch but assassin's creed is the other uh, series that has looted me and this one is assassin's creed the rebel collection with assassin's creed the rebel collection you get two action games you get assassin's creed 4 black flag and assassin's creed rogue so in 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 black flag you end up playing as a pirate so you got to be like this famed pirate i guess and you have a ship, a giant pirate ship, which looks really, really cool. And you just go through like this giant open world. Uh, the other one is Rogue, which you play as a Templar. But I have never played any of these two games, and or even an Assassin's Creed. The last time I even saw an Assassin's Creed game running in a console that I was in a room, standing in the same room, was, the, was one of the earlier Assassin's Creed on the Xbox 360. So if you get this on a sale, you get two games for the, you know, for the price of one. So... I think it's it's pretty cool. Okay, so the ninth game on the list, Burnout Paradise. Uh, so it's like a racing game. It's a racing game, but it's so open world. It's ridiculous. The the you basically have this giant city where you you drive around the city and you drive to di different parts of the city at certain points where you can participate in events and you have to try to pass those events and if you pass those events then you know you'll get money um you'll you'll increase your license skill as well but the game is awesome burnout paradise is it, it took me a while to figure out how to get in the events I, you know when i was first playing the game i was just driving around for like 15 minutes and i'm like okay like where where are the events like what are you supposed to do and i was just driving around i mean i was still having fun just driving around. and then eventually i figured out i'm like oh oh so you get to a certain point and then you got to press uh one of the buttons to actually start the event and then it kind of 
sets it up for you. The one bad thing about this game is on the Switch, it takes forever to load. Forever. The initial load. The initial load of the game when you go into it. It, it takes like five minutes. Like no exaggeration. Five minutes to load the game. But it's an awesome game. It, it's actually an awesome game. It's a good pickup. Okay. So now the tenth game on the list, I'm not going to say too much about it. It's Minecraft. You can't get any more open world than Minecraft. Minecraft allows you to create infinite worlds as far as the scaling. Uh, well, infinite, but there is. A, it's not quite infinite. It's as You can create worlds as big as your machine can handle it, whether it's a computer or your console or whatever. But Minecraft, I mean, you just you have giant world where you can play with your friends and you can create giant base and create towns and create... All sorts of cool stuff. So I'm not gonna go too far into that. It's like you, you have two different modes. You have a survival and a creative. And uh, but yeah, but if you want something creative and a large open world experience, then definitely hit Minecraft. It's a good choice. Uh, number eleven. This this game is Red Fraction Gorilla Remastered. So well, I guess that's their clever way of saying remastered. This is another one that I haven't played. It's, a, it's an older game, but it looks really cool because you're on Mars and the environments are destructible, which is awesome. You don't have a lot of that destructible environment stuff in a lot of these open world games. Yes, some games will have it that you can you know, break regular things that you see out, like, like um, a barrel or a box or destroy, I don't know, some barricade or something, right? But you don't see it often that you'll see an open world game where the actual building itself is destructible and you can destroy the whole damn thing then in this game you can actually do that which is awesome so it's set 50 years after the climatic events of the original red faction red faction guerrilla allows players to take on the role of insurgent fighter with the newly reestablished red faction movement as they battle for liberation from the oppressive earth defense force uh, next time that one dips to, to a couple bucks, I'm probably going to end up picking that up. Okay, so the 12th game on the list, Yonder, the Cloudcatcher Chronicles. This one is a relaxing one. It's a relaxing open world game where you kind of unwind and enjoy the slow life. And you're in the world of Gemia, a natural island paradise with the eight distinct environments ranging from tropical beaches to snow-capped summits. But it's not as perfect as it seemed. The mysterious Merc has taken hold of the land. As the hero, hero of Gemia, you can seek out the hidden and whimsical creatures known as the Sprites. Use their power to clear the Merc and restore nature's beauty. So yeah, it's Yonder's The Cloud Crasher Chronicles, 12th on the list. 13th on the list, Lego City Undercover. This one is always on sale. It's always on sale. And it's cheap. Um, I feel like it's always like 8 bucks. I think regular price on this one is $29. This one gives you co-op, local co-op capabilities, and you're basically in the Lego city, and you have this big bad guy, Lego, this big bad guy that you have to find in the city, and you have a bunch of quests that you go on. Uh, it's so, so silly. It's, it's one of those silly... And I love Legos, but I'm not a big fan of Lego games. So this is probably the one game on this list that I'm not a huge fan of. I mean, I'll play with my daughter just to kind of goof around. The reason why I'm not a fan of Lego games is because they're just never serious. They're, they're always goofy, like kid goofy, not like adult goofy, like kid silliness. And they're never really challenging. Like a lot of the, Le I mean, I've played the other Lego games before, and they've always, they're just really easy to to beat. And I think one of the biggest popular reason why a lot of the Lego games were popular for um, these other series that they have, for like the Batman Lego and the Indiana Jones Lego and the Harry Potter Lego is because it's very it's it's kind of nostalgic to those movies right those shows and a lot of people like to go through and play those games to kind of revisit those scenes in the in the movies but in a Lego universe but if they didn't have that I don't think I don't think the Lego games would be as popular I feel like they're just they're just too easy and too goofy and it just it doesn't really it doesn't feel like anything to me um, but if you're that type of person that you like those kind of games and you want to play games that are just silly and goofy and stuff you want to play cooperatively with people with somebody then this is a, probably a, a good play for you the co-op is vertical so the it's the the split is right down the center instead of being like 
horizontal and, and cutting off your widescreen in a kind of a weird way. But yeah, that one's Lego City Undercover. And we'll see what we got. 14th on the list, Borderlands Legendary Collection. Borderlands, been around forever. Fantastic games. Borderlands 1 and 2. I'm not a huge fan of the prequel. I mean, the prequel was okay. I, I guess maybe because the prequel, it, it was just a little too much of the same crap that I've seen before on the first two games. Borderlands 2 is probably one of the most amazing games I've played, without a doubt. So if you end up buying this game, and by the way, this game is on sale for 60% off, I think. It's super cheap right now. And I think the sale only goes on for four more days. But if you end up picking up this game, it's this collection that gives you everything, everything, except for one DLC for Borderlands 2. If you pick it up, play Borderlands 1 first, then play the pre or, or prequel first, whichever one you want to play. Play both of those games first. Leave Borderlands 2 for last. And the reason why I'm saying that is because once you get done playing Borderlands 2, when you go back to Borderlands 1 and the prequel, they're not as good. And you're, you're not going to play them. You won't play them after that. Trust me. So if you pick that up, say Borderlands 2 for the very last game to play in there, okay? Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is the 15th game on the list. This game, another awesome game. It's ridiculously awesome. A lot of there's some people that don't like this game because they don't like the combat because the combat is very it's kind of auto combat, um, and that is it's actually one of the diff most difficult things to get into in this game um, because it's about pressing the button for the combat at the right time in order to chain the combat to get these huge big explosive combos. And you don't notice it. Even though, there's, even though there's a tutorial in this game or several tutorials as you go to different parts, you don't notice it until, like, after, after you've been playing the game for a while. It, I mean, I, I must have been playing the game for, like, 10 hours or whatever before I, I, I'm like, okay, I gotta figure out this combo. And I had to go up and look up some other videos and say, how, do you, how in the hell does this combo, this, I mean, it's not combo, this combat work? Then once I finally got it, I'm like, ah. You know, when, once you understand it, it's easy. The combat is easy. Beautiful environments. It's not a, it's not like a completely open world with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It has large areas, but then you have to go to other large areas and then, and then explore all those. So in this game, the, all the civilization parts are on top of ti the backs of titans. The game has a bunch of characters and these living weapons called blades. And those blades are kind of like, they are they kind of help you in the combat, right? They, they, they're, they're doing a lot of the fighting. And what, and what you need to do is your, your main character, Rex, and your Blade Pyra, you have to end up trying to find this legendary land, in a way. Try to, to, to find this place that a lot of people think that don't exist. And you'll come across a bunch of bad guys that have uh, blades as well. I think the anime in this game is awesome. It looks beautiful. Uh, the game doesn't look as nice and handheld. It's way better on the TV. That's one. That's another knock I'll give this game is that when you play it on handheld, you can tell like it, it's just it's it gets downgraded so much the visually. Um, but yeah, but the but the characters and the towns and the and the creatures you come across and it's very it's, it's much more like classic RPG where if if you're like if you're somebody weak and you come across a big monster, you're gonna get, you're just gonna get trashed. They'll they'll, they'll one shot you and you're dead. So you have to be within like five levels of most of the enemies in order to actually compete. Uh, the dialogue is good. I do feel like the dialogue, though, they have way too many pauses in the dialogue in the game. So like, you know, Pyro will say something, two seconds go by. And then Rex will say something, two seconds will go by. And then Pyro will say something. And, I, and when they, I think with those long pauses, they make some of the the dialogue feel robotic and if they would just go back to all those dialogue scenes and just cut the pauses in between it would it would flow a whole lot faster and it seemed a little bit more real um, but it, it isn't it's an awesome game if you can get used to the combat and if you can actually enjoy the combat i think you'll you'll enjoy it it's uh xenoblade chronicles 2 at the 15th spot 16th is okami hd i have not played this game it's another one that has slipped slipped me have purchased it 
It's sitting on my Switch, just marinating and waiting for me to play it. Uh, so you take on the role of Amaterasu, the, the Japanese sun goddess who inhabits the form of a legendary white wolf. Use magical abilities, attacks, and celestial brush techniques to restore the land of Nippon to its previous glory full of life and color. The art style in this game looks amazing. It, it kind of looks like Asian or, like I mean, maybe Japanese kind of like watercolor painting environment. It's just, it's, it looks really, really cool. Um, it, it's another game that goes on sale a lot. It's really cheap on sale right now for like 10 bucks. Um, but yeah, it's Okami HD in the 16th slot. 17, Super Mario. It's me, Mario. Super Mario Odyssey. Amazing platformer. Some of the worlds in this game are just ridiculous ridiculously cool i love the water world i love the water world in this game but yeah it's what well, you're you're mario and of course you're fighting the classical enemies bowser and all of his little minions and you just go from one world to the other until you defeat all of them and you have this hat where you can throw this hat out and you can hook it onto enemies and you can actually go into those enemies and control them it's an absolutely fantastic game there are little moons that you collect in the game, and you have to find... I mean, they're like kind of like the stars in Super Mario 64 or whatever. You have to find these moons in each of the levels, and there's a ton of moons. Like, it's ridiculous. I mean, I was shocked. Some of these worlds have a crap ton of moons to find, and usually you have to do some secretive thing in the world in order to get that moon. And some of the moons, they're actually challenging. Like, there's times where I'll, I'll, I'll see some, and I'm like, I'm like, how in the hell can you get to that? Like, how do you do that? But yeah, it's 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 an it's an awesome it's an awesome Mario game. It's worth its high ranking. Okay, 18th game on the list, uh, American Fugitive. So in American Fugitive, it's an open world game that you're it's top down. Now, when you first start the game, it's not as big. It's smaller, but eventually you'll end up opening up the world as you go through. And you're basically your your protagonist has been framed for a murder that you did not commit, and you have to go through this journey to find out the person that did the actual crime. And meanwhile, you're getting chased, well, because you're a fugitive on a run, right? And then you're in this american town that is just got a bunch of criminals but yeah it's another it's it's probably the most the probably the a little more unique on this list because it's a top down adventure instead of being one that's kind of 3d world and you can look all around so that is american fugitive on the 18th spot and the last game we're gonna go with a 2d game side scrolling open world game and that is terraria game it plays like mario and zelda and minecraft if you mixed all of those together tons of items to find in this game and you kind of you're you you can build whatever you want like your your castle your fort whatever and then you have this whole underground area where you just go through and you dig in these different kind of biome sections of this world and you you stumble across a bunch of enemies a bunch of like temples there's a bunch it's got a good good amount of bosses in the game there's a, a normal mode, and then there's a hard mode that once you defeat the Wall of Flesh, you get to the hard mode. And um, But yeah, this game is a great time. It's awesome. It does not have anything graphically that's impressive. It is that like a, a very 2D, pixel art-looking game. It's just so much fun because you can build and you can attack enemies. So there's a lot of action in there, as well as the creativity. And there's also a ton of cosmetic items and i i love that uh, you, that you can put on your character so terraria is a fantastic choice it's definitely another game that you can sink all of your time into there you go there you go 19 open world games on the nintendo switch i th i feel like almost all of these games are great great games a couple of them that are older um there's a couple that I, a few that i haven't played but I, th I feel like most of these games, though, that are will just you can sink a ton of time, and they're just they're all a little different in in, in their own way. Um, but they're just yeah, awesome. I mean, I, I I can't praise this any more than I can because you can't go wrong. You just can't go wrong in this list. I think any game that you buy on this list, except for the Lego game, 
like I said earlier, you can't you can't go you can't go wrong with you'll 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 have some kind of enjoyment as long as that I guess that game fits your style. But that's it, guys. I am Jim, the game guru. I'm your video game and board game nerd. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and leave any comments. If you have any other open world games that you play that you wanna that you would like to see in a future video, let me know in the comment section. Or if you disagree. Or whatever, but I would like to know how some of these games are too. Like some of the, the games I haven't played yet, like Green Hell or Yonder. I would love to hear about those and see if they're super amazing or if they're okay or what, or, or your experiences with them. But anyway, I'm out of here. I will see you guys in the next video.